Hi, I'm Benjamin Herman, and this is a video abstract for my recent paper, Modeling Synchronization in Forced Turbulent Oscillator Flows, which was recently published in Communications Physics. And you can find the link to the full paper uh, on the description below. This work was jointly done with Philip Oswald and Richard Seman from TU Braunschweig and with Stephen Brunton from University of Washington. So let me start by defining what do I mean by oscillator flows. These are fluid flows that display unsteadiness characterized by a well-defined frequency and that are rather insensitive to external noise. Wake flows are a prototypical example and even turbulent wakes are known to exhibit a similar behavior. And these flows have been studied for decades, mainly due to their richness as a nonlinear dynamical system and also due to their relevance to applications in aeronautics, transportation, and energy conversion. And a great model to describe the evolution of dominant patterns in these flows is the celebrated Stuart-Landau equation. In this work, we leverage an extensive experimental data set to extend the Stuart-Landau equation to model the response of wake flows when periodically forced. And this is the example of oscillator flow that we are working with. It's a D-shaped bluff body uh, that is very long in the spanwise direction. So the flow is quasi two-dimensional and the body has a rectangular base. And we conduct wind tunnel experiments at a Reynolds number 56,000 that is based on the body height and the free stream velocity. The body has two thin slits located at the upper and lower trailing edges through which we do periodic blowing. And it has these two curved Kuanda surfaces on the back that deflect the outcoming jets into the wake for a more effective actuation. We have five time-resolved pressure sensors located at the rear face of the body and positioned in the center plane in the spanwise direction. And what we do with these signals is take a weighted average to obtain this output signal X. And if we take a look at the power spectral density of X, we see one lonely peak located at the natural frequency, which we called omega zero. So this is the frequency of the unforced vortex shedding in the wake. And other authors have looked at the power spectrum of X when the flow or a similar flow is periodically forced either at the natural frequency or at an integral multiple of it. Here, we take a look at how does the power spectrum changes for over 200 different forcing frequencies, ranging between zero and three times the shedding frequency. So if we take these 200 power spectra and we vertically stack them one next to the other, we get one of these heat maps. And we have six of them because we consider three forcing amplitudes denoted by epsilon and two forcing configurations. So the first one, which we call symmetric forcing, where we are blowing through the top and bottom jets simultaneously. And the second one that we call anti-symmetric forcing, where we alternate blowing through the top and bottom jets. So this is the enlarged view for one of those plots, uh, where again, both axes represent frequencies. So the horizontal axis has the forcing frequency omega f and the vertical axis has capital omega which denotes the uh, frequency content of the signal x that is characterizing the wake dynamics. And the color map denotes uh, spectral power. So if we choose a forcing frequency and take a vertical slice in this plot the brightest spot along that slice will represent the dominant frequency component in the wake being excited at that omega f. And we also find the direct signature of the forcing frequency in the spectrum of the response, and that's colored by this green line, where capital omega equals omega f. And then we find these other regions that we color in, in yellow and in light blue, which correspond to 
nonlinear interactions between the forcing and wake modes, giving rise to these signatures at omega f plus or minus omega. Um, so these frequency components, colored in, in yellow and light blue, are much fainter for the case of antisymmetric forcing, meaning that triadic interactions play a much lesser role in the wake response of antisymmetrically forced flows as compared to symmetrically forced. Finally, to complete the picture, all the other uh, features that you see here can be explained either as higher harmonics of the forcing or the nonlinear interactions between the wake and these higher harmonics. So now that we have a full picture of what are the dominant frequency components in the wake response, we can build a low order model that is as simple as possible but is still able to capture um, this kind of response. So now all the plots that you will see on this last column correspond to numerical simulations of an ODE model. And our starting point is the Stuart-Landau model, which with correct coefficients sigma and L will exhibit self-sustained oscillations at omega zero. If we add a forcing term, um, we will get a, a response at the frequency that we are forcing. But if we ha have a harmonic forcing and we want to get a response at different frequencies, then we need to add a nonlinear term. And these terms that we add in here are modeling the triadic interactions between the forcing and the wake modes. Finally, to generalize our model to non-harmonic forcing, like in our experiment, we simply replace the harmonic uh, forcing term with a whole Fourier series. So in practice, of course, you would truncate this infinite series. And how much will depend on the spectral decay of your periodic forcing signal. So, but typically, you can retain only a few number of terms with free model parameters that you need to fit. So let's talk about synchronization. What you see here are hundreds of fireflies blinking together on a riverbank in Japan. So excited by their neighbors, each individual firefly slightly adjusts their own blinking rate until uh, you get what looks like organized behavior. Synchronization theory is a fascinating field that studies this kind of behavior for systems such as chemical reactions, spiking neurons, animal locomotion, and many others. And in the last part of our paper, we borrow some of the tools from synchronization theory to analyze the dynamics of forced oscillator flows as described by our model. So this is our modified to our Landau model, and here is where synchronization comes in. Because our model is relatively simple, we can analyze its dynamics using some classical tools. And I'm going to skip over the details, but you can find all about them in the method section of the paper. What's important is that we find analytic expressions for the regions of synchronization that come in two flavors, what we call n to one synchronization and n to two synchronization, meaning that n, where n is any integer, n cycles of the oscillator flow take place for every one or two cycles of the forcing. And these expressions are parameterized by the model coefficients and can be used to delimit what are known as the Arnold tongues of the system. The Arnold tongues are the regions in the space of forcing frequency and forcing amplitude where the system synchronizes to the input. So the gray regions are delimited by our analytic bounds and the yellow crosses are from our experimental measurements. And we see remarkable agreement between approximations made on an, an ODE model and measurements for, from a turbulent flow field. And as you can see, the response of the wake in regards to synchronization is quite different when using symmetric forcing or anti-symmetric forcing. And I might add that 
we can also use these expressions to enforce known physics on our model. Because we have available measurements of the synchronization bounds, we can use these expressions to solve for what the model coefficients need to be, such that by construction, our model respects the synchronization dynamics of the measured system. And this is a very exciting research direction that we want to look further into in the future. OK, so thanks for watching. And again, I skipped over a lot of the details, but I invite you to read the full paper, and you can find a link to it in the description below. Thank you.